God could have allowed Elijah, Moses, and David to be in this time, but he trusts us to be here at this time. When I read the Bible, I think of, of uh, these mighty men, but then God brought to my mind, he said, but you are living at the end of time, so I'm really counting on you. So he's counting on each one of us to be ready, but there's no need to stand up for the right unless you're going to stand up against the wrong. You know, and, and the same way we talk about all the right, but we got to be willing to stand up against the wrong. we got to make some decisions whose side we're on, but we're going to stand up against the wrong. There's no need to stand up for the right unless you're going to stand up against the wrong. Tell me how you're going to ever stop from being weak unless you make your mind up to be strong. You got to do the right, walk in the light, cause it won't be long. There was no need of standing up for the right, unless you gonna stand up against the wrong. Tell me how you gonna ever stop from being weak, unless you make your mind up to be strong. You got to do the right, walk in the light.
Gary Chapman sang it. And uh, as wonderful as our families are and our church families are, and the love that we have for one another, and the wonderful times that we can get together and fellowship, and praise the Lord. As wonderful as all these things are in the world, there's something that's even better. It's even more of a treasure. And that's what we're talking about.
First one is uh, Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 through 7. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 through 7. It reads, I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, and that is my name. My, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The second one is John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. And it reads, <laughs> Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant, the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And the last scripture is Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. It reads, For I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 This is the song I'd like to, for you to reflect on the freedom that we have in Christ. It doesn't matter where we are, what our problems are, what our physical problems are, our health problems. That, as Brother Philip just read, we know the world we are free.
the uh, Maranatha Church is launching is, uh, well, we've already launched our evangelistic uh, campaign, but this kind of like one of the crowning yeah. acts of it, okay, yeah. one of the crowning acts of it. And um, Boulevard 4, I've known them uh, just about all of my life, yeah. just about all of them. There's a little part in there where I was going goo goo gang and they weren't around for that. But uh, almost that far back. And uh, I've known these gentlemen to be men who strive to do what the Lord had them to do. And they're involved in evangelism. They've been, you know, several different places. And this time, uh, Anthony Jenkins, who's one of the members of the group, is going to come and uh, talk to us a little bit about evangelism. Hey, what I would like to do before I get started, uh, I'd like to introduce my, you think this ain't clandestine informant, my wife. <laughs> Raise your hand. And sitting next to her is, I'll let Terry introduce her, but a couple of our wives are here. Okay, all right. But that's my wife, Robert T. We are parents of 11 children. Amen. 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 <laughs> to me, evangelism is to let people who are ignorant of the Creator, the one who made all things, and that He has a great love for us, that He was willing to send His Son to die in our place, that we might not test death, that we might have an opportunity to live not only in this earth and have an abundant life, but to live in heaven with him for all eternity. Mm -hmm. And to let everyone within my voice, everyone that's within uh, sound and distance, read distance, passing books, whatever you can do to pass on this knowledge to them. To me, that's truly evangelism. Amen. Evangelism to me is just uh, telling other people about what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Amen. Evangelism it is exactly what has been stated. Evangelism also is what I see in the basket over here. Amen. Uh, evangelism reaches out and it energizes people and let people know of Jesus, who Jesus is. And Jesus wasn't just a preacher. But he found the needs of people and he fulfilled those needs. Amen. And, and, and um, this has been on my mind. I was just happy when I came this morning and I saw the, the food over here. I said, this is true evangelism. Because I'm sure this food is to find somebody out there who, who they need. And if you want to fill up a church, find the need, fulfill the need, and those people will see Jesus in action. And that, to me, that is true evangelism. Not just the preaching part, but he had every segment of, of his life was evangelism. And that's how we got here. Because someone saw the need that we had. It wasn't, and some of us didn't come because of the preaching, because we probably heard preaching all on the radio and everywhere. But there were some people who were lonely, and somebody came and showed some love and cared about it. There were some people who didn't know where that next meal was going to come from, and somebody came and lived out that thing, what Jesus would have done. And they were drawn. So God take all these things together, and he sent us out to evangelize. And I believe that, that this church that you all are going into now, you're going to be amazed at what, what's going to take place because I believe that by the time that we leave here and what I heard today and everything, we're going to put all this together. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be, see, there's too many, I see so many houses around here that, that maybe just heard the preaching part. That's right. mm -hmm. But they don't know that you all have come back into the hall to get the other part together like a football team. That's right. You know, you, we're trying to make a touchdown here. So when you don't make the touchdown of the, the first time, you don't just give up. Yeah. But you go back into the hall. So we left something out. We, you're running the ball, you're leaving something out. So what it is, you add these other entities together, and I believe that you would actually see and be a part of true evangelism. Yeah. And God will give increase. We all have um, different talents and gifts. Uh, we're one body, we have different members of the body. Just because I might be a foot 
doesn't mean I'm not part of the body because you might be the eye. I'm still the body. You know, so whatever gift or talent that you may have, just put them together for the edifying of the church. And Bible says, do the work of the evangelist. Yeah. Just don't be one. Just do the work of one. I'd rather do the work of one just to be one. You can be one and not be doing anything. But do the work of the evangelist. Is uh, the lead singer and first tenor of the group. Uh, and you correct me if I go straight here. I want to try to recount the history as best I can. Okay. The group got started, I think, uh, in the late 60s. Is that correct? Okay. At the Boulevard Drive Seventh day Adventist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And that group uh, was the first quartet that the church had. And that group was called the Boulevard Four. Okay. Boulevard Drive. Four guys in the Boulevard Four. Okay. Uh, and for the first time I know in my life, I heard quartet uh, singing, you know, somebody I knew singing quartet music. And I tell you, I was sitting sit in the audience spellbound uh, listening to the renditions that these four men would, would do. The, the rhythm group consisted of William Floyd, individual named Burnell Mapp, who lives in Montgomery now, Arnold Green, who lives in Huntsville, and uh, William's brother, Homer Floyd, who sang bass. Well, that group, because of career pursuits, kind of uh, diminished and uh, went away for just a little bit. And uh, myself, along with Anthony and, du and uh, Dwayne, uh, we just kind of got together and said, you know, we need to keep something going here. You know, there, we, there needs to be some more quartet singer here. So we got with William, and we began another group. Now, from what I understand, that that group was called the Gospel Revelators. We called ourselves the Gospel Revelators. But we started singing and traveling around City of Atlanta, and guess what? We had some. We had a twin group in the city. Somebody else would call themselves the Gospel Revelators. So the idea came to say, well, we can't do that, you know, copyright and all that kind of stuff. So we said, let's go back to something that works, something that's been familiar, and the, the group was renamed the Boulevard Four. I stayed with the group for about 12 years, 13 years, somewhere around there, and then I heard Uncle Sam calling, uh, via the Lord. You know, I had wrestled with uh, whether or not she'd go in the military for a long time. The Lord told me, said, look, the men and them who are dying, the women who are dying, they need somebody with the everlasting gospel going in there. So I answered that call. And the Lord, like we all know, has somebody waiting in the wings. And Terry Price, who we used to play football on the street, you know, Rocky Ford Road, against no Wood Avenue, you know. And, and by doing so, don't, don't miss these young people. DJ, you play football, right? Yeah, we just play football against this guy, but you see now we're singing together, okay? So, you know, you get them singing and then you'll be all right. Okay. <laughs> so, so Terry took my place. Uh, hey, that was, he tried to. But anyway, he, he's... <laughs> I'm just going to have fun and be like, amen. Amen. All right. We're going to have a good time this evening. But Terry took, took uh, my place. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, they, they sang together for, you know, for a long time uh, as the Boulevard for. And over the years, to make a long story short, there have been different varieties of the Boulevard for. There's even been a Boulevard for company. Had a couple of guys from Jamaica yeah, that, that, you know, uh, joined the group and sang with them for a while. And uh, most recently, uh, Clarence Fields, who was the newest member of the group, uh, uh, he used to sing with a quartet in Atlanta called the Inspirations. Okay, and that group uh, had a member in there, his name was Jonathan Slocum. Anybody ever heard of Jonathan Slocum? John, he's a Christian comedian, and Jonathan used to sing with that particular group. Uh, but Clarence brings with him a wealth of experience, and you know, uh, this is a whole, whole a lot of years of singing solo and quartet. And you hear some of the solo uh, music this evening as well. Uh, Anthony, wants, uh, let me just do this once again, and. Introduce his wife. Uh, you mind standing? Because she doesn't mind standing. Then wave your hand like you just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's Robert Jean Jenkins. Okay. They've been married how long? 